This is Philip with an update from the hub. We're late night here with uh, Les Peterson. Wait, hello, Hawaii Tracker. And we've got a big batch of images from Scott Wilson from Aloha Skies Aviation that we would like to show you guys tonight. If any of you guys are still up and not packing or running from lava or what may be. So uh, I don't see anyone connected yet. Oh, there's a first person coming in. Hello, welcome. Hi everybody, takes a minute. I'm here at the hub with a late night update for you guys I'm with Les Peterson, Hawaii How Tracker. So we got a new batch of photos from Scott Wilson of Aloha Skies Aviation that we're gonna show you guys. Maybe I'll just get into it. There's so many pictures we can kind of cycle our way through. All right, so the big story of course is what's happening with Lava River um, down in the area of Kapuho Crater. So here is the image that shows uh, what's going on here. Um, as of right now, we'll kind of backtrack and see what actually is happening. But as of the most recent imagery that we have, we see that the channel has refilled with lava that's getting about as far as here, at least in big bulk. There's some kind of leaking down, but the huge, huge flow is the one that's turned to the south around the west side of crater a green mountain right here um, there's also an overflow to the north this is the one of the ones that we were warning about um, that's not actually it right there let me get the, the proper photograph there it is there so here's the area of the flow that's flowing down to the south around the west side of couple crater which is over here and this big pond was also spilling over to the north and you can see there is exposed lava right there and the flow actually seems to be red all the way down to the edge here all the way to the edge there and kind of continuing I'm not sure how how it bounds in here to the one on this side is active over here as well and then this spot over here is the old lava right down in here Literally this thing. all right so um, bottom line the lava that was going towards Cinder Road and, and uh, Railroad Avenue seems to have slowed down quite a lot. You guys hopefully have heard those reports uh, by now on social media. But here's some photographic proof that it's still f flowing a little bit. Um, the potential is still there that this thing could, could actually take more lava on and start flowing this direction a little faster. Um, these photos, I believe, were taken around sunset, so that would put, put it probably around 7 o'clock, I'm guessing, some of these. There was an earlier flight I'll show you guys also, maybe around 5 o'clock, so... They're all from this afternoon sometime. I, I can't tell you exact date, exact times um, right now from when Scott t t took these photos, but they're from his two flights this evening, right? Okay, so the flow that's on the north side, we're looking to the south in this perspective. This is an old finger of lava right here. You can probably find it on your old maps. I can show you guys shortly. But the new flow is advancing along the edge of that, over top of it as well. And here is railroad, I believe, right there. And this right here is Cinder Road right in here. So the last report we had from the ground is the flow may have, might have got as far as the berm or the pie field, maybe right in here. But it had slowed down and maybe even stalled at that point, right? So I'm not sure. I'm not ready to say it's done over there because there could be more lava coming through that direction to be a threat. But most of the flow, thankfully, for the people in this area, went down in that direction over there. Right. There was an initial flow started over here, split over over here as well, and then down an area around Green Creek over here. So that's the that's the, the probably the most important status right now. But there's a lot more more photographs to look at. Philip, was this this from the second flight? I believe this was from the second flight. Yeah, I think the images that we see the lava glowing a little more red are when they're with a better with a darker light. Because I, I believe the second flight was at about 6.30. 6.30? Okay, well, great. Thanks for that, Les. So, um, so there it is. Um, well, if you guys, if my connection is cutting out a little bit, it's pouring rain here, and, uh, um, well, hopefully you guys can still hear us, too. So, all right, so that's, uh, there's a lot of photographs here. I don't need to show you guys every one of them, but I wanted to show you another one of a spot farther up the river. Um, this is actually at the... Uh, close to the to the joining of the of the middle set of braided islands. Um, well, yeah, the rain stopped huh, as soon as I, as soon as I said that. And it looks like the flow 
Um, we've been looking at these photographs. The flow actually has reoccupied a channel that was drained earlier and hit a blockage. Quite likely this block right over here that might have been parked here and hit that and spilled over to the sides, jumped the channel out of the channel in this area right over here. So you see there's a house right there, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure if this thing is still going or if it's going to be able to push its way back through the main channel over here, but it doesn't look good right in here for, for this little zone right in here. And let's see, what, what can we show next? Let's keep going back up, up slope and back in time. So if we're looking down river now, here's actually that cinder road finger right in here. I believe that right in here. Is that right? Yeah, and then there's a big breakout right there around Capole Crater. And lava is actually trying to go back into the O2. Maybe some of it's leaking through whatever blockage is there, but it's not that much. Um, I, I would guess, maybe you agree uh, less, that the amount of glow in here would mean that there's more lava than in the previous one we saw when it was all the way drained. What do you yeah, think about I that? Think yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so. All right, so um, let's keep going back through the photographs. Looks like the blockage is still there, but just kind of found a place where it can squirt through there a bit. Right. Well, almost like it's coming out of a pipe. Right, right, right. So most of it doesn't fit through there and it's spilling out and over, but some little amount actually does go through there. Okay, here is another view. This is looking back up at Fisher 8. So Fisher 8 is up here. And there's a channel. Here's our Y. I'm sorry, our, our, our elbow that you can see from the Y. It must be right in here. And looking at this photograph now, I don't see any major spillovers in that area anymore. You can see there's definitely some hot ground in there, right? So that could have been could have been a little more recent, right? There's no steam right over here. I, I was there about nine o'clock tonight, and at the time you could still see some red glow from the uh, lava that was okay. still there, but okay. it was pretty faint already. Right. Mm -hmm. So that must have been from overflow that, that was reported earlier yeah. this morning, and then even as early as yesterday, some, some reports yeah. of it is on there. So, all right, let's, let's show you guys the photographs once again so um, you guys can see how much uh, the, uh, steam is on the flow field. The, the flow is really raging over there as well. There, the, splashes out, the splashes out from the, over the top of the channel look like, uh, you've ever seen pictures of solar flares and an eclipse? I mean, just right. huge arcing streaks of lava over the top of the channel. It was, it was, wow. Wow. It was pretty, I mean, it was, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and it was posting too, yeah? Will you tell us? Yeah, right. Yeah, we were up by the fissure earlier. You could just see the output from the fissure just kind of just pulsing it, you know, maybe five, six second cycles. You know, it, just, it would just like just come out just incredible force, and then it just back off a little bit, and then it would just pulse again. Right, so I think the bottom line is it's, it's still pumping, you know. We've been discussing, you know, um, potential volume implications of, of what this kind of flow is and you know our conclusion you know um, at least preliminarily is that the volume did not decrease in fact it may well have increased right to kind of uh, support all the different things that we're seeing on the, on the flow field so we'll talk about more more about that in detail uh, tomorrow I don't want to get into too much too far into the weeds here tonight I'll show you guys what's actually happening with the flow right so that's for sure not much change up in there um, and down here is that same area, the blockage, that's kind of uh, spilling back over. You can kind of see in a grander scheme of things where that actually is, right? So here's our first major confluence right there. And then here we split and go down and look, we can see the island right there, huh? Right. At that point, it's interesting. Okay. Uh, there's another another view of that. Let's skip that one. Farther up the channel. So here's our our upper spillover, maybe we can call it, compared to the lower massive spillover. Mm -hmm. um, up in here, we can see the flow is actually occupying both channels and both channels here as well. Maybe it's time for us to go farther back in time. Um, I don't think we're gonna get there soon anyways. Fisher 8 flowing on both sides. Um, yeah, you guys and Ina Loa are fine. Um, thanks for asking. Um, we'll talk about where the flow might actually go, um, but the bottom line is, uh, unfortunately, the warm ponds are once again under threat from the flow. So we'll get to that here shortly. Um, maybe the the fact that I thought it might possibly be a reprieve for the warm ponds actually is completely wrong. It looks like it actually got worse for the warm ponds rather than better from this happening. 
Um, so here we go, different view of the same thing once again. Spill over by Cinder Road, I'm gonna keep moving because he sent us a lot of fantastic photos, but we don't need to micro-analyze each one. The main ocean entry um, is maybe a little weaker, yeah? I think that's been a report from the, from the boat and from the air is that the ocean entries are a little bit weaker. USGS also is reporting I think, a slight decrease in ocean entry so far. Um, you can see how much, how much steam is on the flow field with all the rain. And okay, here we are to the earlier, these are the early, earlier photographs now. So this is a photograph down by the crater once again. Here's a crater right there. All right, the flow hasn't had a chance to get here and spill over that, this down this direction yet, or to refill the tube over here, or really to spill over, no, actually it's back over here, so let's let, we'll wait for to talk about that. You can see like it actually came back through and refilled the channel. Um, here is our area of our upper blockage area. When we showed you the last photograph, it was spilling over right in here, kind of pouring both directions right in there. But right in this photograph, this part of the channel is actually drained right here. Um, you can see the lava actually float over top of the middle of this island and over top of that other little island that was in there before. Um, there's some blockage happening, at least one in here, maybe another one farther down in here, we believe also, right in there. Uh, maybe let me compare this one. Let me, let me flip back to the other one that I, that we had earlier. I believe it was 1122. This one. So I'll compare that to what came later. And the lava came back through through that channel, then refilled it, hit that burst, and spilled onto both sides. So um, there there is that. Let me go back to where I was, which I believe was here. And we'll keep going. Um, show you guys what it looks like from the air. Um, the upper part of the channel was all still flowing uh, on both sides of the channel. There's Fisher 8. Um, flow on both sides of the channel. You can see even the, the recent cooled flow, well, somewhat cooled, is actually still very, very steamy. All right, so let's, let's look at this again. Um, this is a view of the area downhill the, to the south. Let me, let me get to where you guys can recognize something. All right, here is an important photograph. You guys are probably all wondering about what's happening so far with Kokala and Halanui and the secrets. Um, well, the flow that was moving to the south, that was our big flow, big South Kapoko flow, as of the last day and a half or so, the edge of it is right here, right there. So it come just to the edge of that second bay, yeah, on the other side. And unfortunately, when this flow essentially is now getting pinched off, you know, it may, the flow may actually still be going there. It's hard to say what amount it's leaking through, where it's gonna go, what's gonna happen with it. But the bulk of the flow is gonna come around the side and it looks like it projected, we're projecting it back, may actually come down right next to this one, unfortunately, and that was gonna, is actually gonna put this area at even greater threat than it is now. So maybe we should, uh, well, we'll, 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 I think we're almost through the pictures, and I'll show you guys, it's a little map. This is a photograph from earlier showing- but, the, Is it also true that the blockage could clear from the bottom side of the crater, and you know, if that were to happen, then, you know, maybe it does not continue that in that direction? Yeah, it's, I think, you know, um, I think all bets are kind of off, right? I think, you know, what we've seen before, like the last time that the, the blockage happened at that corner of the dog leg, right. and the channel then jumped its bank, that gave the downstream section a chance to drain out, and when it came back into that drain section, it didn't go in the same place anymore, right? That's when it, we had the start of the south flow that happened a day and a half ago. So, mm -hmm. um, in my mind, I just think it's, in, it's, it's unpredictable or less stable, you know, and, and kind of, could go anywhere, it could refill the channel, it could easily not refill the channel. Um, and it probably depends how much lava is going through there, right, to, to actually mm -hmm. cause it to happen. Because the scenario I just described was the full flow of the channel going back into that drain, right. that drain area. Right, so now we have just some part of it going in, so that's, that kind of changes things. So um, let's go back to our photograph here. So um, the flow right now is actually coming as far as here and ponded in this whole area and buried all this stuff and it's flowing out 
in this direction over here. Here's where we can look for those hills, by the way, yeah. See what's there. Um, you guys might you can kind of point out there's a house that's right in here with that green roof. Um, it's right at the edge of the flow in the last photograph before uh, the first one I showed you guys. So let me, uh, let me jump back to that one now and give you guys a comparison. I believe it's this one. This one. No, it's not this one. It's a. Uh... Nope, it's not that one either. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of photographs here. This one. This is the one. And right in there is that little greenhouse, green roof house. So it doesn't look good for that place. In fact, uh, we think that these might actually be big, be big blocks, big slabs of the lava itself that have been rafted down from this upper area. And the huge things compared to the size of the house as well. So um, that's the that's the flow now. Let me see if there's any other photographs to show you guys. Um, down here. What is this? This is a photograph of the drained river down over here with the lava flow that came back into it, refilling it, right? It's going to kind of pond and spill over in directions over here and kind of try to reoccupy going that way and spill over both directions over here. And here's a view looking kind of opposite angle. Here's that front of that lava going back in. Here's a couple crater. The first spillover is to the south over here. Actually, the, you know, the, the first spillover to the south is actually farther over to the west is what I'm trying to say. The next spillover will be in the area more going that way right through there and I think there's a south side of this as well let's see if I can find it in the photograph here I, mean, I don't see it right there but maybe let's go to the look at the thermal map first give you guys some orientation of where, where this stuff actually is so let's start at the Kapoho crater end Kapoho crater is right here right in there so the current flow is going to show up going down through this little green area. This little green area is where it's filling in a lot of, a lot of spot between this older spillover. I don't remember the date of that. Do you remember the date more or less when uh, that was, Wes? No. No, no so it was a couple weeks. No. A few, three more weeks. Than ago, more than a month ago. Yeah. More than a month ago. So it was what, close to when it started. Yeah. Right, when it was first first establishing yeah. its path around. Early, early June, I think. Early June, right. Okay, so, so right through there. Um, so right there, um, that's kind of that dark area we saw the flow kind of going over over top of the first breakout being over here but then moving across here and is now flowing all the way down in the area over here it's a little bit, a little bit hard to see looking through the camera so that's the spot of the the down slope spill over there and then the north edge uh might, might be going something like this over here and then we know the flow is some part in the middle of over here and then gotten to the edge along this gap on the north side and kind of along through there, right through there. That's kind of the edge of the flow on the north side right now. So fortunately, uh, it appears to be steeper to the south, and it looks like most of the flow is actually going that way right now. And as long as that continues, you know, it, it, we you know, may be lucky that lava does not get pushed in this direction. But that, you know, might actually assume that, uh, that might actually assume that the, the flow volume is not increasing, right? If the full volume is increasing, it could actually spill out both directions at the same time, right? Don't you agree? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, another thing is that even though the flow volume may go up and down, in a given part of the channel, the flow volume is fluctuating because there's all these blockages here and there. So even if Fissure 8 is putting out at a, at, at a high rate, or even if that rate is reduced, you know, when you get parts of the channel that are blocked off, it'll cause the channel in some places to behave like there's little output because there's not much lava flowing in there because of a, of a blockage. Or upstream, you know, it's acting like there's a raging flow because there's a blockage and it's overflowing all over the place. Right, yeah. right. So it may have to do as much with the blockages 
but that's where we're having a hard time maybe uh, decoupling the you know the cause of those because they're maybe they're going to be coupled together in both the blocks right. and the amount of lava coming out. So thank you to uh, who said it? Scotty Scotty Yoshi just alerted us to the fact that there's a new thermal map, and I just pulled it up and here it is. So um, you can see this map is from 2 p.m. today, right? So that's fantastic. That's uh, a blockage. <laughs> and then, Multiple blockages. Yeah, so here's the, we have it labeled. So the first blockage, we believe, was actually, you can kind of see, let me zoom into this thing. Um, this channel over here is not, is the one that's kind of draining right here, right? So the blockage happens up right over here, right? And that is a new flow going down on the side over there. It's covered a lot of this island right in here and kept in the channel, still hot, overflowed all through here, overflowed here, there's an overflow actually on the south side of that as well that maybe I hadn't pointed out yet. I don't think I saw that in the photographs as clearly. And all the way over the southern components also, right, where, where, where both these channels come together, right, that's kind of where you'd have the, that's really the, the nexus of the whole thing right in there. Huh? And then not as much up, upstream, right, you don't see in this particular image as many overflows in the upstream section. And then looking at the downstream section over here, here is a flow that's pushed back through and is reoccupying the channel. You can see the channel is actually fairly cool, it's drained. There's a little bit of hot lava right in there. I mean, I suppose it could be a little bit of a crust too, it's hard to see, see exactly, you know. And then let's see what we got over to the side over here. The channel looks at least crusted right in there, and if not drained, there's definitely still some heat in here, some heat in here. So this thing is actually, even though it looks like it's a dry bed from the top, still has a good amount of lava in it. It's still hot, right? This bottom part could keep flowing even if there's no supply from the top, given the size and mass of it. That's my, my feeling about that. And let's see what we have as far as ocean entries, weak ocean entry activity, it says. It's like our north branch is actually still a little bit hot, but doesn't seem as active as before. It's a little bit definitely hot over here by the coast. So the lava is still moving through that, both on land, land and off land delta area right in there. And let's see, by now, by the photographs we have, what can we tell? We can tell the green crater is right here, so this new flow actually came over here and is going down this direction now. And given the photographs, I, don't know, I would guess it's somewhere in here, the tip of it's somewhere in here right now. Is that something about right? Yeah. Somewhere in there, yeah. Maybe let's go to the other map so you guys can maybe, whoop, that's not the one I was going for. Let's look at the... this map. Alright, so on this map, which is also 2 p.m. today, it doesn't show those overflows quite yet, but it does, does show the area right here that's looks like uh, the flow is almo almost all the way up to the edge, in some places is up to the edge of a couple of crater, and it looks like it's gonna flow right along that seam, right? right through there and fill in all this area in between the earlier overflow, all this kind of bare land all through here. Yeah, I don't know if, it's almost more like a splash up than a flow. That's Be, right, right. Yeah, because the, the, that area in there is actually almost 100 feet higher than the main channel area there. So the blockage is forcing the lava to just smash into the side of the mountain there and kind of just just wash way up the side and it's filling up that open area there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that it's really a really amazing detail. We'll uh, I'm going to show you guys that photo next, but while we're on this map, maybe we can look at the descent line. Um, since we got to come back here anyways. And you know, um, we only have the large scale right here, but that's going to be good for an initial assessment at least, I believe. It seems like the flows that are all in here will probably come down either across the flow right here or they'll come around and across the flow somewhere right in here. But once they do that, they're going to 
flow towards the edge of the flow that the southern flow which is still hot and active over there and I imagine there's a little gully and um, I, I personally imagine maybe less than correct me if there's a bit of a better idea but there's a blue line and visible along the edge of this thing on the side you know imagining that this flow has got some height to it yeah that there's probably like a little valley right at, at this edge of it here so probably this flow is going to want to go right along the side of this last one that just came out right here right so any model lava that's coming out you guys saw that we're going to talk about that big splash up you know so um then you'll see how much lava is actually moving and so the good news for people living on the north side of this is you know this is basically exactly the opposite of what i said in my last update you know, when I was thinking the main flow would go to the north, and it actually might spare the south, it looks like the opposite is happening. The main flow is going south, and it might possibly spare the north, at least temporarily for tonight. So um, what that means is if you guys look down, down the edge of this flow, it goes right to the edge of the Halanui and Kokala and Secrets. So unfortunately right now, it looks like Secrets is right in the bullseye of where this flow wants to go if it keeps doing what it's doing with a caveat that things are kind of unstable you know and it's possible that something you know we're talking about the possibility of multiple blockages up there and it may reorganize itself before too long potentially we have no idea I mean, we'll kind of have to yeah, something to keep in mind wait and assess something to keep in mind is that we're seeing multiple blockages and something's causing these uh, big chunks of rocks are moving downstream to occur. You know, they're breaking out from somewhere. They're breaking out from the bottom of the channel or they're breaking from the sides of the channel or maybe from the enlargement of the fissure itself. And we've been seeing this, you know, on and off for the past, what, week or so? Yeah, at least, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a trend that's going on right now and it, there's probably going to be more blockages. So yeah, absolutely. it's important to stay alert on what's going on in your surroundings, especially if you live down that area, because at any time, one of these blockages can occur, block part of the channel, and you, know, you may need to be ready to leave your place, um, you know, to protect yourself. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, good, good word of caution, yeah. So we have some ideas of, you know, like how these blockages may be occurring, but it might be enough to say for tonight that the conditions are right for lots of blockages to occur. And, like, that's basically what people need to know is that, Right. They can lot, lots of watches can occur for whatever. Not, not to scare anybody, like there's some specific threat right now, other than the, what civil defense is already warning people about. Um, but you just want to be, you know, especially watchful. The, the situation is not as stable as it might have seemed for the past month or so. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, okay. we're, we're just not as stable anymore. That's you know right. yeah. maybe the easiest way to, to understand it is our period of stability is over. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter if you're living near there. It basically means it's much more likely that uh, something is going to change, right? So let me show, let me show you guys that photograph that we're referring to, um, which we actually saw already, but we didn't have a chance to zoom into it. So I believe it's this one, right? I'm going to do some zooming here. And you guys can see that especially on this area right over here, we see lava is actually ramping up on top of either a big slab of lava that's floating down or it's some topography right in there. And you can kind of see even here it's going, you know, it was almost like it was a dam that burst and the thing just went flooding down. Yeah. That, that's a situation I, I almost wouldn't believe it could happen if I wasn't seeing the actual picture of myself and knowing what the topography is right there. It just amazing that that lava could wash up that high up the side of the Kapoho crater. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but, you know, you know, if you guys are joining us late, basically the big story is that the bulk of the, of the, of the overflow is going to the south, away from Cinder Road, away from Papaya Farms Road. So, uh, there is still a threat there, but the flow that's moving in that direction is moving very slowly. Um, and most of the volume, at least for the moment, appears to be headed to the south along the west side of uh, Green Mountain, couple of crater, and unfortunately it's going to put it back towards the warm ponds. That's the basic, uh, basic uh, development that we have here. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to add to this 
to this tonight, Les? Or you know, it's nope, kind of late. I'm good. Yeah, it's yeah. late. It's late. So it's yeah, you guys. Some sleep. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. We want to make sure we got got some information out with you guys since we didn't know exactly what was going on. We issued a warning earlier, right? And you know, like I said, I was um, happy that at least temporarily there's a reprieve, right? I think people should still be ready on that north side because things could change again, right? Um, conditions are right for those blockages. It's less stable. Um, what we just finished discussing. So stay, stay safe out there, you guys. And that's something you want to say to sign off. You want to join us with our stay classy punas? <laughs> stay classy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Stay classy, puna. Thanks, you guys. Aloha.